since a lot of the cellular processes can happen in the cytosol. When we specifically talk about anabolic processes, they often require NADPH. For example, in fatty acid synthesis, we require NADPH for each round of fatty acid synthesis where we add a two carbon unit onto the growing fatty acid chain. So the question is, how do we get NADPH in the cytosol? We know that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol and it produces NADH, and that NADH is used in the electron transport chain, but how do we get that NADPH, which can be used in anabolic processes such as fatty acid synthesis? There's two ways in which we can get this NADPH in the cytosol. First is we use this reaction where we utilize malic enzyme. We utilize malic enzyme to carry out the reaction from malate to carbon dioxide and pyruvate. We see this often in C4 plants uh, because we want to isolate that carbon dioxide and, uh, and the pyruvate. So the ribulose, the rubisco is not reacting with oxygen. So in this case, the malic enzyme is going to take this NAD+, and it's going to gain electrons from that malate, and malate is a 4-carbon molecule, and pyruvate is a 3-carbon molecule, that's why we lose that CO2. And when it oxidizes that malate, the NAD+, will get reduced, and we get NADPH. This is going to be uh, in the cytosol. Uh, and that's just one of the methods where we can get NADPH in the cytosol. And this NADPH can then later on be used in anabolic processes. Now, the second pathway, this is the one that we can see in vertebrates and higher eukaryotes, is that we use the pentose phosphate pathway. The pentose phosphate pathway starts with glucose 6 phosphate, but here we're going to denote where that glucose 6 phosphate is actually coming from. It comes from glucose. So in the first step of glycolysis, when glucose gets phosphorylated through the enzyme hexokinase, and when it does get phosphorylated, it's important to note that we're utilizing an ATP, so we're going to be producing an ADP. So when that terminal phosphate on ATP binds to glucose, we get glucose 6-phosphate. Now, if we recall in glycolysis, the reason why step number one was not a key regulatory point is because when we phosphorylate a glucose, we do not want to mark it down only for glycolysis. It can be used in other pathways, and we see that example right over here, where that glucose 6-phosphate is going to be used in a different pathway. That's why the key regulatory step in glycolysis is step three, the enzyme phosphofructokinase. When that phosphorylates uh, our substrate, the the fructose 6-phosphate, then that marks it down for glycolysis. But here, when glucose gets phosphorylated, this does not mean it's, it's only going to go in glycolysis. Here, it's going to go in the pentose phosphate pathway. So in the pentose phosphate pathway, we have glucose 6-phosphate, and we convert it to 6-phosphogluconolactone via the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It's a dehydrogenase enzyme, so we automatically know that we're going to have NAD, uh, NAD or some sort of electron carrier involved. So essentially what we do is that we oxidize glucose 6-phosphate and we produce 6-phosphogluconolactone. And since we oxidize this uh, substrate, NADP plus is going to get reduced to NADPH. That's the first NADPH that's produced in the pentose phosphate pathway. Next, we take our 6-phosphogluconolactone and reproduce 6-phosphogluconate via the enzyme lactinase. This step doesn't produce any NADPH, but it sets us up for the next step. So 6-phosphogluconate is converted to ribulose 5-phosphate, which uh, is carried out by the enzyme 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase. So the substrate once again is oxidized, so the electron carrier is reduced. So the pentose phosphate pathway produces 2 NADPH. And as a result, we get this ribulose 5-phosphate, which is actually a precursor to many other processes. Uh, this uh, ribulose 5-phosphate, it can be used to make nucleotides, or it can be converted to ribose 5-phosphate, and it can be used in, for example, carbon fixation. Now, going back up, 
essentially the key point here is that how do we get NADPH in the cytosol? And there are two reactions that produce NADPH in the cytosol, the malic enzyme reaction and the pentose phosphate pathway, which we actually see in higher eukaryotes. And having an ADPH in the cytosol is essential because it is required for anabolic processes, such as, uh, for example, fatty acid synthesis, and it's even used in carbon fixation and so forth. 